It takes you living and staying in the spirit to develop your spirit man. Spiritual development can only occur when you intentionally dwell in the spirit. It takes living in the spirit to bat things in the spirit, to achieve things in the spirit, to walk in the realm of the spirit. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. <coughs> Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. I was in the spirit on the last day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. Based on this, I welcome you this day to stepping up. My name is still Sebastian. In one area, we are looking at developing your spirit man part two. Developing your spirit man part two. I just want to appreciate everybody that was part of our program uh, at this last Saturday. It was awesome, glorious, and impactful. I see God Almighty bless you all in the name of uh, Jesus Christ. Thank you for people that asked various informative kind of questions that, that brought us the best in us. I say heaven will bless you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. The Mind Development School present a one-day executive training. Mind Development School presenting a one-day executive training in Executive Basic Diploma Certificate. Executive Basic Diploma Certificate in Mind Cultivation and Mind Management. Mind Cultivation, Mind Management coming up on the 28th January 2023, 28th January 2023, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Ikeja. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Ikeja. And it's a four-course module. It's a payable fee course that we must pay before the 20th of December 2022 because we have limited space and to enable us to handle a lot of logistics and put things in place. Your cost, your, your payment covers your training materials, uh, uh, your, your, your writing material, your certificate and form, and what your lunch. And as you pay, that Lord Almighty bless you greatly in the name of, of, of Jesus Christ. Uh, if you want to get any of these materials, <coughs> you want to get our books, and we want to recommend the test and books that we read to get this understanding, you are free to call us because before the end of the program, our email address, Facebook uh, account, uh, uh, email address, our phone number, and what? And our WhatsApp number will be on your screen for us to discuss from that platform. And as you do, the Lord Almighty will greatly bless and empower you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, we are looking at that developing your mind. We are, we are looking at developing your spirit man. You're developing your spirit man part two. Your spirit man cannot grow and cannot be developed or cultivated except your spirit man has understood how to live in the spirit. Until you live in the spirit, your spirit man cannot be developed. Your spirit man cannot grow. Your spirit man cannot be cultivated because development is a gradual growing of something. It's a gradual growing of something. It's, it's a slow movement from one point to another is 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 a what is a stage by stage development is a little here a little there adjustment a little here a little there readjustment a little here and a little there improvement a stage by stage improvement a level by level uh, uh, changes a stage by stage growth a layer by layer what um, renovation a layer by layer renovation a layer by layer renovation and what and a strata by strata re-engineering. That is what it takes for you to, to, to what? To come to that development. And when we say development, the end point of development is a better you, is a greater you, is a bigger you, is a stronger you. That's the essence. And the end point of development is what? Is batting a new you. A new you that has evolved, a new you that have revolved, a new you that have been transfigured. Transformation and transfiguration is a product of development, a gradual adjustment, a gradual re-engineering. So in the last episode, we talked about the place of development. That's why I said you cannot walk, you cannot take steps until you leave. Where you live is a function of the steps you take, is a function of the performance you produce. Where you live, where you live. And we said, where you live is a function of what? How you set your mind. According to Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. Verses 5 and 6. 
Romans chapter 8, that says, if those that live according to the flesh, they set their mind on the things of the flesh. Those that live according to the spirit, they set their mind on the things of the spirit. To be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. What does it mean to be carnally minded? To be carnally minded is to be ruled in your mind realm by your flesh. To be ruled and controlled in your, in your thinking faculty by your senses. When you say you are a, to be spiritually minded, to be spiritually minded is the spirit of God taking control, being in charge, the, uh, dictating and directing the happenings in your mind, in your mind. So we went on to look at what does it mean to live, to live, to live. Because it is where you live that determines your work. That determines your work because Galatians 5.25, Galatians 5.25, it says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So where you live guarantees what you, uh, where you are working. Where you live guarantees the kind of work you produce, the kind of performance. Remember, where you live produces A, W, A, L, K, and where you live produces B, W, O, R, K. So both the working and the living. There are working of the spirit, there are working of the flesh based on where you live. The question is, where do you live? Where do you live? And where you live is a function of where you set your mind to, where you fix your mind on, what you are beholding per time, what you are looking at per time, what you are focusing your mind per time is a high function, is a high uh, uh, exposure or revelation of what happens in your mind. Because we said in our, in our last episode, we looked at it, we said where you live part time is your personal decision, it's your personal responsibility, and it's up to you. It's up to you. And we stopped at point um, 17. And we are continuing from there. Point number 18. Always let your thought and thinking and reasoning be filled with the things that you want to live in, with the things you want to live in. Let your thought, let your thinking, let your reasoning pattern be filled with where you want to stay, where you want to stay. You want to live according to the flesh, let your thinking pattern, let your thought be filled with fleshy things. Number 18, fix your observations on the things you need to live with always. Fix your observation. Fix your observation. 19, keep your mind fixed, set, focused on those things you urgently want to live in. Those things you urgently want to live in. Let me tell you this. When we talk about setting and fixing your mind, because we are still going to go back and talk about when you, how to live in the spirit. How to live in the spirit is beyond you fixing your mind on the Bible. It's beyond you fixing your mind on the Bible. How to live in the spirit is beyond you just reading the Bible. Because Lagos is not mentioned in the Bible. Nigeria is not mentioned in the Bible. Africa is not mentioned in the Bible. So how do you know specifically, specifically, the location, jurisdiction, and the environment in question? It is by what? Deliberate, intentional, continuous focus or focusing on a scripture. On the scripture that Lord will grant us understanding as we go on in the name of Jesus. Number 20, point 20. Keep and set your feelings and affections on the needs around you. Keep and set your feelings. Keep and set your feelings. Keep and set your affections on the things you need around you always. Always. Keep and set your feelings on the things you need around you always. Number 21. To place Position, prepare, and arrange your mind and keep focusing habitually on the things and thoughts that are above. 22, you will always live on the things you always think about. You will always live on the things you always think about. You live always on your mindset. You live always on your mindset. You live always on your mindset. What is your mindset? Your predominant thought. Your predominant belief system, your predominant accepting pattern. You live always on things you are beholding. 23, you live always on things you are beholding. You live always on things you are beholding. What are the things you are beholding? When you behold poverty, you 
magnetize poverty. Number 24, 24, to look continuously at the particular defined objective which reveals and exposes where you live per time. Which reveals and exposes where you live per time. So now we've looked at where you live. Let us now look at where you work. When you live at a place, it will automatically produce a working pattern. What is a working pattern? A working pattern are steps to be taken. A working pattern are action to be taken. A working pattern are decision to be taken. A working pattern are activities in place based on where you have focused your mind. You can't take actions, activities beyond where you have set your mind, where you have positioned your mind, the direction of your mind. That is why the, 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 where you find yourself, surround yourself with some kind of people, definitely you are living in their minds. You are living in their midst. That will inform, that will transform, that will form what? Your behavioral pattern. So let us look at what work simply means. To work means, one, it is to take steps according to where you live per time. To work means to take steps according to where you live per time. Number two, it is to take decision due to where your mind is fixed at per season and per second. Number three, it is to take action based on the direction of your mind. It's based on the direction of your mind. You are taking action based on the direction of your mind. Number four, that is the meaning of to work. To work is you will always make moves according to the positioning and the placing of your mind. You will always make move according to the positioning and the placing of your mind. Number five, your activities are always generated according to where you set your mind at per time. Your activities are always generated according to where you set your mind at per time. Number six, your belief system, your agreement system is due to what you have choose to fix your mind on. Your belief system, your agreement system is due to what you have, what you have chosen to fix your mind on. Number seven, number seven, things you are beholding per time, things you are beholding per time informs and forms your character and behavioral pattern per time. Things you are beholding, things you are beholding, things you are beholding per time forms and informs your character and behavioral pattern per time. Number eight, the things you do behind the scene is a product of what and things your mind is beholding per time. The things you do behind the scene. If a lot of people don't know that the things we do behind the scene are the, funda are the foundational activity, are the fundamental practices that define, determine our placement in the journey of life. The things you do behind the scene. The things you do behind the scene. The things you do behind the scene. It is not actually things you do in the office that guarantees advancement. Are things you do behind the scene. What are the things you do behind the scene? What do you focus on? What do you say? What do you read? What do you what? Study on. The Lord Almighty will grant us intelligence in the name of Jesus Christ. Number nine, it is to make up your mind to do the things you need to do based on the things your mind is filled up per time. Number ten, to follow a pathway based on your mindful conviction and persuasion per time. We are talking about when you take action, when you walk. When you walk, when you walk, when you walk, listen to me. Laziness can be a product of your association. Laziness. Laziness. Because a woman called and was like, Pastor, why is my daughter lazy? My daughter is not from a lazy home. I have three daughters, but one particular one is lazy. Is it the first or the last? He says it's the middle one. But it was not lazy like this before. Pastor, what has happened? Please, I've been trying to find out what has happened. I told, the, I told her, what has happened is, hear me and hear me well. What has happened is along the line, she gets infiltrated 
into a relationship or a relationship got infiltrated into her and they were now telling her, uh, 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 condemning what you have taught her, telling her that being, being, um, being a hard worker is slavery. Being a hard worker is slavery. They will come and start telling that, that for you, to, are you our slave? Are you everybody's slave? You are being used. People don't understand that the word you are being used means that you are useful. If you are not useful, you can't be used. You are being used. And some people will not think that it's a good word to say that like, nobody can use me. That is a cause you are placing yourself. Nobody can use me. Ah, I can never be used. Though. I can. You, if, <laughs> you think you are making statement that that you can't be used. Nobody can use me. Means you want to be useless. That's why we have to be careful. There is power of life and death in the where? In the tongue. In the tongue. In the tongue. In the tongue. Two episodes backward, I, uh, two episodes, two previous episodes, I said that Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19, Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19, God said, I present before you this day life and death, blessing and causes. Choose one. And he said, I ask you to choose what? To choose life. To choose life. And I was asking and I was teaching that how do you choose life? You choose life by statement that comes out of you. Please hear me and hear me well. Your life is having an upward trajectory move based on things you say. Your future is a product of things you are saying today. Your future is a product of things you are saying today. Your future is a product of things you are saying today. Your future is a product of things you are saying today. Your future is a product of things you are saying today. I was telling people that came to the tongues of entrollment, you can't pray well until your mind has what? Has the right content. Listen, you can't tell me that you are a Bible student until I listen to you speak. How you know a Bible student, listen to their prayer. Their prayer is scripturally articulated. They might not be telling you John chapter 14 verses. When you listen to the psalm, Moses, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Iriendos, Kupranda, Laga, Eskupana, Ezekiel, Rikataka, Tuko, Tukrebe, Debrekaba, Lekundo, the sound you release, which is work. The sound you release, which is work. The sound you release is a function and a product of where you live. Kaba, you know. Could, but when I say where you live now, by now all my viewers and listeners all over the world will understand. When we say where you live, we are talking about where you set your mind out. Are you setting your mind on spiritual things? Are you setting your mind on carnal things? Are you setting your mind on privilege? Are you setting where you set your mind determines and guarantees what comes out of your lips? Your mind. Your mind is a place of change. Your mind is a place of transformation. Your mind is a, listen. You want to move from a from a supervisor to what to a director. Your mind must be transformed. You are a supervisor because your mind have accepted all the informations that make you to be a supervisor. For you to become a director, you have to learn, understand, read books. Go for trainings made for directors because what keeps you at that level, what keeps you at that position, resultfully, powerfully, is the development of the content of your mind. Your spirit man cannot grow. Cannot grow. Cannot grow. Except your mind is involved. That's why First Peter, I think two, First Peter, Chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, says like a, like a small babe, desire the sincere milk of the word of God by which you grow thereby. So where does the milk of the word of God come to? It comes to your mind. That's what we're saying. It comes to, if your mind does not accept the teaching, your spirit man will not grow. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I have a lot of things. That's why I just did that. That body language because I have a lot of things that is coming through my head to share, but I need to go back to my note. Seriously, because, because many of us don't know that when they are teaching, when they are teaching and the teaching is too deep, you can't understand it, or the teaching is, is passing through your head, it's because your mind is yet to grow to that level. Listen, your mind is at this level, and that person's mind is at this level. When they are speaking, you won't understand. 
I've done this experiment for the participants that come to most of us to, to some of our training. I will bring a book and give to them. Read this book, just a page of the book. Explain. The book was written in English. Giving you the book to read is it's not terminology. There was no terminology there. It's just normal English language. Giving you to explain, uh, giving you to read and interpret what you have read, most of them can't. And that's why I was telling them that look, <laughs> there, are, <laughs> there are people that write the same thing with the Bible. The book of Romans was written to the intellectual power of the Bible days. If you are not spiritually sound, or you don't live in the spirit, you can't interpret the book of Romans. God only will give us grace and wisdom in the name of, of, of Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, let's move a little bit further now. We have looked at where you live. We have looked at where you, how you walk. Now, let's look at the futures to live in the flesh. The futures to live in the flesh. The futures to live in the flesh. After that, we look at the futures to walk in the flesh. The futures to walk in the flesh. Number one future to live in the flesh. It is to be governed by the unholy appetite of the members of your body. That is to live in the flesh. To be governed. To be governed by the unholy appetite of the members of the body. Of the body. It is to be controlled it is to be controlled by the unholy desire and passion of the flesh. Number two. Number three is to fix their thinking, their reasoning faculty on the things that gratify the flesh. It is to fix their thinking, their reasoning faculty on the things that gratify the flesh. Number four, it is to focus their mind to the pursuit of those things, those thoughts which satisfy them and fulfill the flesh and the human nature. It is to focus, that's number four, to focus their mind, to pursue those things, those thoughts which satisfy the human flesh, which satisfy the human nature. Number five, it is when you pay serious attention to the earthly, to the environmental, worldly things and thought. It is to pay attention, to pay attention, serious attention to the worldly things, to the environmental things, to the worldly things, to the societal ideas. Number six, number six. We are talking about the future of what? Living in the flesh. Living in the flesh. Living in the flesh. Meaning you are setting your mind, you are setting your thinking faculty, you are reasoning faculty on the environment, on the society, on the locality, and what? And, and, and the world at large. Number six, number six, it is to place position mentally, to place and position mentally on the passion, the desire, and the appetite of the society. Number seven, it is to be ruled to be led, to be regulated according to the willful appetites, according to the willful pattern and passion of the five senses. Of the five senses. Number six. Number six. It is, and sorry, number eight. Sorry, number eight. It is to be mentally regulated, mentally influenced by, ex uh, mentally influenced externally by the environment society and community. Let me take it again. Number eight. It is to be mentally regulated, mentally influenced externally by the environment, the society, and the community. Remember, the Bible says those that are led by the spirit, they are no more under the law. And I've told you that the law is external. Uh, law means rules and regulation. Law means rules and regulation. When you are waiting for an external person or an external force to tell you what to do, it means you are not led by the inward discussion. You are not led by the inward discussion. I don't, I don't need anybody to tell me what is good and what is bad. I need, when you are doing something wrong and you are living in the spirit of God, the spirit of God will prick you that that thing is wrong. That thing is wrong. 
If I even go far, as further, people will tell me, Pastor, we can't hear from God. We are not hearing God uh, speaking to us. Question I'm asking you according to this series is, do you live in the spirit? Where do you live? Number nine. <coughs> number nine. Point number nine is to be practically blinded. The futures of living in the flesh is to be practically blinded to the things, the ideas that are supposed to be productively and beneficial to you. To be blind to it. To be blind to it. To be blind to it. Number 10. Number 10 is it is to have your understanding darkened as a reward of wrong encounters. How the futures of <laughs> living in the flesh, living in the flesh is it is to have your understanding darkened as a reward of wrong encounters. Number 11. It is to being alienated, disconnected from the life of God and from the inheritance of God. Number 12, it is to be ignorant of a lot of relevant, impactful things, impactful thoughts, impactful ideas of God's kingdom. Number 13, futures of what? Living in the flesh. Futures of God uh, of living in the flesh, number 13. You can never please God. You can never satisfy God in the flesh. You can never please God. You can never satisfy God in the, in the flesh. Number 14. Whenever your human nature controls, regulates your mind, your thinking, faculty, and ability, it leads to death. It leads to death. It leads to death. Yes, I'm going to go and break now. Don't tell that that I will be back. When we come back, just look at one or two more points. Then we do what? Then we go into your test message. Don't tell that that I will be back. For inquiries and feedback on our channel, kindly call this number 08029 657760. 08029 657760. Or send us email feedback at dovevision.org. Thank you and God bless you. Now, welcome back to Stepping Up. My name is Steve Sebastian. On one area, we are still looking at developing your spirit man, part two. Developing your spirit man, part two. Looking at your developing your spirit man, part two. And uh, before we went on break, I was, I was telling us uh, some certain things we need to do, uh, point 15, on what we need to do. But let's just quickly take the announcement. Don't forget that the Mind Development School presents one day executive training, one day executive training, in Executive Basic Diploma Certificate in Mind Cultivation and Management. Mind Cultivation and Management coming up on the 28th of January, 2023. 28th of January, 2023 is a payable fee course and we have limited space. And this cost covers what? Your writing material, your course material, your certificates and form and your launch. And the deadline for payment is the 20th of December, 2022. 20th of December, 2022. I'm encouraging you to pay on time and, uh, uh, and for you to secure a place. And as you do, heaven will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Just the teaching is how to deprogram yourself and reprogram yourself to be what God has ordained you to be. Because there are a lot of programming inside of us that, is, that have led to what is called self-sabotaging behavior, self-sabotaging attitude. Most of this programming, many of us don't even know that it is somewhere there. And I caption it with what they call, it's called a stronghold. A stronghold. This, the deliverance, you know, will not get there. Deliverance is made up of two. We have spiritual deliverance and we have mental deliverance. Many people are yet to come into this understanding of the mental deliverance. The mental deliverance is a, a stronger, so to say, depending on the person involved, than what? Than the spiritual deliverance. Both of them are important, but we need to come to the understanding. Like, let me make the statement I used to make. You don't become what you know. You don't become what you learned. You can't become what you know. You can't be transformed into what you know or what you have learned. You are always transformed into what has been stored. So how do you remove what has been stored? How do you remove what has been stored and reprogrammed? And as you come, 
and do that Lord Almighty will bless you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ before the end of the program. My email address, my phone number, and my WhatsApp number will be on your screen. And let us discuss on that platform. And as we do, heaven will bless you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me just take one or two more points. Let me take one or two more points, then we move ahead. All to the glory of God and to the shame of, of the devil. We move ahead, we move ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, point 15, now point 16. To be mindful of the flesh is death. Yes, to be mindful of the flesh is death. Point 17. To be, point 17 is, for they who are after the flesh do mind. Set their mind, focus their mind on the thoughts and reasoning of the flesh. Yes, let me just quickly go to, um, go to our test messages. Uh, good morning, sir. I'm enjoying what you are doing. God bless you. And God move you to the next level. My name is Esther Samuel, and I'm from Calabar. How do we get those books and materials in Calabar? Before the end of the program, my email address, my phone number, and uh, my WhatsApp number will be on the screen. So we discuss those things from there. And as you do, the Lord Almighty bless you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, this is Tony, Tony Lawson, Tony Lawson, appreciating what God is doing. Pastor, through you, you, are, you have spoken great and mighty things that is so shocking to me. But God Almighty bless you greatly. Tony Lawson is sending his test from South Africa. I say, God Almighty bless you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Pastor, my name is God's power. More grace, sir. You said where I fix my mind is about, is about living in the spirit. Now, if one has to live in spirit, must I focus or fix my mind on heavenly things 24-7? Does that mean I should think of, an, uh, does that mean I shouldn't think of another thing that can bless my life? That is not what I said. But this is a very beautiful question. Uh, God's power, this is a very beautiful question. I have explained it. Let me still explain it again. Fixing your mind, fixing your mind, which is the place you live, is where you focus. We are still going to get there. Where you focus on scripture, where you focus on the scripture. Because I told you that the Bible recommendation on this focus and setting our mind is morning and evening. Morning and evening. Morning. This book of the Lord shall not depart from you uh, day and night. In it you shall meditate day and night. So, so, so it is morning and evening. Where you read and how you will know that your mind is involved in what you are reading is where you step away from that place, where you step away from it. As you step away, what happens? You can recall what you have read. You can recall what is in your mind. That is where you understand things, where you know that your mind was involved in what you are reading. People that when they read and they walk away, they can't remember, is a product and a feedback that your mind was not involved your mind was not involved because the place of remembrance is your mind. The place of recollection is your mind. The place of memory is your mind. So it is your mind. It's not your spirit. It's your mind. It's your mind. If your mind cannot replay, recall, remember what you have read or what you have done, is where? It's, it's, it's a function your mind was not involved. Bishop Oedekbo will say that there is nobody that will eat dinner and forget the kind of dinner he ate yesterday, except there's a problem. Now, now, to scripturally show you what we are saying is James chapter 1, I think verse 22 to 25, James chapter 1, he says, don't be a hearer alone, but be a doer. He says, a hearer, this is the likeness of a hearer. A hearer, they are specialized in hearing, but their mind is not involved. Their mind is not involved. That's why I said that you don't become what you know. You don't become what you have learned. Let me add, you don't become what you hear. You become what has been taught. What has been taught. What has been taught. So he says that a hearer is likened unto someone that beholds his face in a mirror and walks away and forgets the manner of man in which he is. And he gets to verse 25 of James chapter 1. Verse 21, I say, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, that is it. Continues, continues, 
continues in it, is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be what? Will be blessed in what he does. He will be blessed. So, let me still further explain to you. I tell students, it's applicable. I tell students, anytime they teach you a new course, a fresh course, that your mind is not used to, because hear me and hear me well, every new information, every new experience, every new thought, every new ideology, every new revelation, your mind does not accept it at once. The new thought, new revelation, new ideology, new information, your mind pushes it away. New experience, he pushes it away. He pushes it away until you deliberately, intentionally set your mind at it, fix your mind at it, focus your mind at it, concentrate your mind at it, and behold it before it comes into it. So, what I'm telling you is not from morning to night. You can even be there looking at it from morning to night. Your own mind is at a different place. Your thought is not even involved in what you are looking at. That is where meditation comes in. That is where uh, 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 imagination comes in. That is where repetition comes in. That is where persuasiveness comes in. So, so I'm just trying to explain to you God's power. So you can bring in other things. That is one of the ways you can distract your mind after you have focused your mind on the things you want to see. After distracting your mind, distracting your mind means you can talk to somebody, you can discuss with somebody, you come back to your seat and, and try to meditate, try to recall because your mind is the place of memory. And let me tell you the mind because, because many of you will be looking at me now. Because mind, I'm telling you now, this one is senior class. <laughs> mind is divided into two. Mind is divided into two. We have the conscious mind and we have the subconscious mind. And the mind, the subconscious mind is the place of memory. The subconscious mind is the place of storage. The conscious mind is the place of learning. And the, what we are trying to say is learn, because this is the teaching of the school now. I'm just giving you about 5% information for you to know what we are going to be talking about. So what you now know is how to move information from conscious mind to become a subconscious. The subconscious mind is the, is the autopilot. Is the place you are programmed, and it's what is playing out in people's life, not the conscious, not the conscious. Pastor, what are you saying? That's why they can teach you something on Sunday morning. You are jumping up and down as if you are knowing by Tuesday, by Tuesday Bible study, the pastor asks a question of what he taught on Sunday. You are forgotten. You are forgotten. And question, by the time pastor still asks the question of what he taught on Sunday, on Tuesday Bible study, some people will remember and understand. Question, what did they do? So it is what they did that we are teaching. It is what they did that are teaching. So it's a deliberate, intentional act. It's not a gift. It's a skill to be cultivated. It's a skill to be acquired. So I'm spending much time on this because this is the womb of the discourse. This is the uh, 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 transformative platform. Transformative platform. This is the transfiguring altar. When you understand this, when you understand this, you can. People have asked me, do I cram scripture? You don't. You don't cram scripture. You behold scripture and move scripture from the conscious mind to the subconscious. From the conscious mind to the subconscious. From the conscious mind to the subconscious. That's why information and response comes from what? The subconscious. 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 What you program on the subconscious is what determines, what defines what happens in your mind. So when the Bible says you set your mind, the mind is talking about is not the conscious mind, it's the subconscious mind. If you want to know more about the answer and this thing, you come for the training. Because that's the essence of the school, so that transformation and impartation can take it can take place. Seriously, go back and check that James. That James is a beautiful teaching. It's a beautiful teaching. It's a beautiful because he said, "Don't be a hearer, but be a doer." He said, "A hearer is is what is deceiving himself. Is deceiving himself. You are always hearing, 
you are always hearing, you are not practicing. He is the, that's the same thing he said in 2 um, Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. He said, ever learning, but never come to the world, to this chant of knowledge. Ever learning, ever learning. They are ever learning, exposing their mind, the subconscious mind. No, they are exposing the conscious mind into the teaching, but the teaching have not gotten into the subconscious mind. That's where you see Hebrews chapter 11, verse 12. Oh, let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. Let's stop, let's stop. I've started the teaching now. Let's stop. <laughs> Pastor Lord Almighty, I appreciate what you are doing. You are doing a wonderful job. Pastor, this teaching is revolutionary. But Pastor, I want to ask a question. I need peace of mind. Pray for me. Ah, should I tell you the truth? The person that sent this, this, this question, peace of mind does not come by prayer. Forgive me. Forgive me. I will quote the scripture. Peace of mind does not come by prayer. It's not coming by external prayer. It is you. Look, let me tell you. <laughs> Isaiah 26 verse 3. Isaiah 26 verse 3. It says, Whose that his mind stays on the word. He said, I will give you perfect peace. I will give you perfect peace. Those that their mind stay on the word of God. I will give you perfect peace. Those that their mind stays on the word of God. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Please, studio, put that scripture. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Please, put those scripture. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. He said, I will give perfect peace to those that their mind stays on the scripture. Those that their mind stays on the scripture. Perfect peace. So it's not by prayer. I can pray for you. Your mind can live somewhere else. That's why I keep on telling us. Look, it's not external. Everything comes from inside. It's not external. Everything comes from inside. It's not external. It's not external. Please, that is why 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. It says, therefore we do not lose heart. Full stop. Even though our outward man is perishing, the inner man is renewed day by day. The inner man, the inward man is what is renewed. That's what we are talking about. Which is the spirit man? 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 The spirit man? And the verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, for our light affliction, that's your, you are disturbed inside. Say, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and internal weight of glory. How? 18. Why we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. Temporal means subject to change, subject to transformation, subject to renovation, subject to what? To adjustment. But at the things which are what? Seen, which are not seen. And the things which are not seen are what? Internal. So it's still back to our central thought, which is where you set your mind. Where you set your mind. Where you set your mind. Are you setting your mind on the situation and circumstances in the environment? Are you setting your mind on the things in the country? Are you setting your mind on the formation of the country? Are you setting your mind on the dollar rate? Or you are setting your mind on what the Bible is saying. Or you are setting your mind on the revelational scripture. Isaiah 53 verse 1. Isaiah 53 verse 1. He said, which of the report will you believe? Which of the report will you believe? Which of the report? So, the report you believe is the report you have set your mind on. The report you believe is the report that you have focused your mind off. The report you believe is the report that you have positioned your mind. So, the choice is yours. The choice is yours. Good morning, sir. I'm enjoying what you are teaching. God Almighty bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm, I am watching you from Meduguri right now. I am blessed, sir. May God increase you. Uh, may God increase you with deeper, greater understanding of his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. I say God Almighty will perform all to everything concerning you too in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I am calling from Canada. My name is Emeka. 
Pastor, you have been doing great and mighty things. What you have been teaching and this series has been an eye-opener to me. May God perfect and complete everything concerning you in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, sir. Please, I want to find out about when someone cannot read properly, how can that person focus on the, on the word? On the word. Yes, when you listen. Focus on the word when you listen. You can't read does not mean you don't hear. You can't read does not mean you don't hear. You see, you hear. The two uh, 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 inlets of information to your mind. The two inlets is what you see and what you hear. What you see and what you hear. So when you go to church or when you are listening to teachings or when you are listening to Bible on CD, because there are Bible on CD, when you are listening to them, when you are listening to them, your, your total concentration will be there. Your total attention will be there. Your total focus will be on there. You will fix your eyes. You won't be in the place and your mind is somewhere else. You ensure, you arrest yourself by yourself, for yourself, through yourself, with yourself, to pay attention, to pay rapt attention. That's how you get your mind involved. And the Lord Almighty will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor, I appreciate what you are doing. You have been so nice and great and great and greatly blessed. I am Tina calling and testing from America. God bless you. Yes, 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 sir. Good morning, Pastor. I am watching your program now. I am blessed by this teaching. Everyone in my family is, is bound with this spirit. And I keep talking to them that this will hinder them. But they don't believe me. How can they be helped? By, they are bound by which spirit? Which, which, what is the spirit that binds them? Let me come into the understanding of the spirit that bound them. You didn't tell me the spirit that bound them, so I don't know how to help you with this question. So if the person that sent this question is listening, please, um, before the end of the program, my email address, phone number, and my WhatsApp number will be on your screen for us to discuss uh, from that platform. And as you do, heaven will answer this question intelligently in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, sir. What do I do to be conversant of reading my Bible as before, uh, as before, pray for me that I will always have hunger for the word of God. I need serious, I need serious prayer. Please help me. I need help. Yes, 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 yes. Father Lord, the person that sent this test, I send the hunger and the appetite of the word of God uh, that passes all understanding to flow through his being now in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, every veil covering his mind from loving and having interest in the scripture is removed now. Or usual hunger call upon him now for the word of God. Receive appetite to study and pray according to scriptures in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, 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 yes. The next one is good day, pastor. I used to see visions, prophecy, but now it's not happening again. Sir, what should I do? My name is Jasper from Portacourt. My name is Jasper from Potako. The question you ask yourself is that what were you doing for those visions to come? Those visions were coming based on some certain things you are doing. Now you have stopped doing those things and the vision have stopped. If your answer is, Pastor, I'm still doing those things, that means God wants to speak to you at another level. So the only way God speaks is not only through vision and dream. God does not speak through vision and dream. God is too big to be boxed in two things, in two elements or factors of speaking. God is too big. The best and most authentic way by, God's, by which God speaks are through what? God speaks through his word. God speaks through his word. God speaks through his word. God speaks through various ways. Various ways. You need to learn. Expose your mind. Take your mind beyond dreams and vision. Beyond dreams and vision. God speaks in various ways. God can speak to you through books. God can speak to you through issues. God can speak to you through the environment. God can bring, can speak to you through people, through people, through relationship. People come into your space. Is God speaking to you? People, there are various ways I can go on and on. Please don't limit God speaking only through dreams. Do you know the meaning of God speaking through dream and vision? It's only when you are sleeping that you hear God. He's, if something is going to happen be, be, be before you sleep, from morning till evening, will you sleep first to hear? The Bible says the people that will see vision 
are who? The old people. Because old people is permitted for them from some age range above. As they are just, you are talking to them, they are dosing. They are dosing. As the moment they dose off, they've seen, yes, they can. But how can a 30 year old, 40 year old person, 50 year old person be dosing in the knee? In the knee? <laughs> so, so don't use your hand to, to, to limit the, the, the discussion span between you and God. What I'm going to tell you is that um, have solid relationship. Have solid fellowship with God. When you have solid fellowship with God, God Almighty speaks through all channels and speaks through all avenues. Yes, 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 yes. Good morning, Pastor. My name is um, Solomon Madoka from Ogun State. I am praying for God's gift in my life uh, to come. How do I go about it? The question is that how are you praying for God's gift to come? Go and get a book that is talking about those kind of the kind of gift you want. Go and get a book. What are the specific gifts that you want? Is it the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing? There are people that are carriers here on planet Earth. I call them nutrients. They are nutrients. Get into relationship with them. What do I mean relationship? Get those books. Start reading. Start, start reading and you pray. The spirit comes upon you. I'm telling you practically. Practically, you get, you get to read all the Bible scriptures that was quoted in the book and you want gift of healing. Number two, how many people operated in the gift of healing in the Bible? You go and study them. Go and study them. Do character by character study. Do uh, um, 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 topic by topic study. Do uh, uh, um, name by name study of people that carried the gift of healing in the scripture. And what do you do? You start studying them, start reading them, start praying and asking God for such a counter. And you will be so glad that such a counter came into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Good morning, Pastor. I appreciate what you are doing. God Almighty bless you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Moses. I always enjoy your teaching. Your teaching has been so wonderful. My question is, what are the benefits of living in the spirit? Yes, just keep on listening to the teaching. You will come to the understanding and the realization of the benefit of living in the spirit. The benefits are so enormous. They are so enormous. When we start talking about benefit of living in the spirit, you will, you will, you will operate at the frequency of God. You will have the thinking pattern of God. You will have the thought of God. Benefits of living in the spirit. You will, you will take action according to the intent and the desire of God. You will drop your desire and pick up the desires of God. Um, uh, uh, um, um, uh, Uncoerce. Effortlessly. Effortlessly. Living in the spirit, your body, your body members will be used to serve God. You will yield your members to the glory of God and to the what? And to the benefit of the kingdom. That, the, it's, it's enormous. It's enormous. Because you'll be having understanding and you will be having understanding of the deep secret of the things of God, just yielding your spirit. Yes, I'm going to stop there for today. Um, um, and the Lord Almighty bless everyone that was part of this discourse, everyone that have sent in their, their questions. I say, God Almighty bless you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, God bless our camera crew. God bless our engineers. God bless everybody in the MCR, VCR. God bless my producer. Everybody that have been part of this telecast, I say, heaven bless you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's my email address. That's my phone number on the screen. And that's my WhatsApp number. Let's go and continue this discussion on those platforms. Ask your question, and God will bless and empower you for you to start registering for those January programs. And as you do, heaven will bless you. Buy books as a Christmas present to yourself. They may bless I like come your way next time. My name is Sebastian Wanneri. Signing out for stepping out. Remain blessed and remain blissful in the name of Jesus.